بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب زدني علما in this video we will we'll discuss about the basic access or the remote access using telnet and also we'll talk about we'll see the basic configuration and then we'll we'll see what are the drawbacks with the telnet and why it is not a preferable way to do remote access so basically from the ccn studies routing switching you may have learned like cc like if you want to manage your device remotely we can simply access the device remotely using a telnet and the basic prerequisite uh, by by using some command line which uses default port number 23 and the basic requirement are like you you need to have some connectivity between the device you are trying to access and the router or or the switch or any device the second thing you need to make sure that you have an ip ip address and and the reachability as well and of course the line vty must be configured with some passwords with a login option or login local options so basically telnet is not a recommended method so let me just go back to the basic lab here where we'll try to verify the telnet here so from the router 2 i'll try to telnet to the router 1 or you can also tell it from the router from the pc in the lan as well so i got my topology pre configured with this routers the router 1 and 2 with the uh, connecting to my computer here and it is using the ip address of 10.1.1.10 so we'll move to router 1 and we'll try to verify the configurations on the router 1 first so if you verify show ip interface brief the router 1 is pre configured with ip addresses and if i go to router 2 i can access the router 1 via telnet so the ip address stand out 1.1.1 so by default telnet is not allowed unless you configure the password on the vty line so i'll go and configure some password on the vty line with some password let's say cisco and then login now once you do this you you can try telnet from the router 2 and the password is cisco and you can see you can you can issue some show users command to verify from uh, from vty line this is this is the device who is trying to access via remotely so of course we can also do it from the putty by using some telnet client applications uh, putty or secure crt and before i go ahead i'll try to make sure that we do have reachability between the pc and the router i can see here i tested that i'm able to ping between my router and the pc and i can open up a session by using any of the telnet client applications on port number 23 using telnet i can log in so it's asking me the password and i can log in via Uh, via telnet so we can also do other way like i can also use telnet also telnet not only supports password based authentication we can also configure some local username and the password for login using the local accounts line with device zero space four and we just need to say login local now the login login option login local option simply says that we need to log in with a local username and the password so i can close this connection and if i go to router 2 and if i try to tell it once again this time it is going to prompt for the username and the password yeah. but but tell it is a basic way to access a remote devices via command line which uses port number 23 by default but it is not a preferred method to do because uh, the telnet connection completely goes in a clear text so if there is any attacker sitting in your network who is trying to capture the network traffic which is moving through the network and if he can capture your telnet uh, traffic he can also get your username and the password details and he can use those credentials to gain access to the network or network devices so Uh, basically attacker can view the information which which may contains those packets like username and the passwords and it is not a recommended way to do so the 
alternative is using SSH, which is the same, same, same as a telnet, command line wise, you can access the device remotely, but it will be secure because the entire session is actually encrypted. Now, I got some screenshots of the telnet packet captures by using some Wireshark tool, probably some other tools. Now, you can see if you, if you capture the packets, and if you analyze those packets, you can clearly see the username and the password somewhere here. You can clearly see here. So, Telnet is an uh, easy way to do. Again, Telnet is by default enabled. You just create a login password. But again, a not recommended way to do because the traffic actually goes in a clear text. So, the scalable alternative to, to use uh, remote access the better way to do the remote access is by using SSH. 